One of the most important class of functions, basic functions on R, is the set of polynomials. So look at a function from R to R, which is a polynomial of degree n. If I can write it as follows, so if I can write it as a constant plus a constant times x plus a constant times x squared plus 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 a n minus 1 x to the power n minus 1 plus a n x 1 to the power n. And the important thing is that this final uh, coefficient, these are all coefficients for the unknown x, that the final co coefficient a n is unequal to 0. Then I have a polynomial of degree n. So all the constants a0 to an are called coefficients. So for example, for example, we have the linear functions. Well, linear functions are just functions which are polynomials, and these are polynomials of degree 1. Like, for instance, we have f of x equals 3 plus 4 times x, then realize that this 4 is unequal to 0, and it's the highest degree over here, the highest power mentioned in this function, so the degree is 1. So linear functions are all functions of degree 1. Quadratic functions are polynomials of degree 2. So, for instance, fx equals 3 times x squared, plus 2 times x, plus 5 times 1. This is clearly a polynomial of degree 2. So this is a quad quadratic function. The cubic functions are all polynomials of degree 3. So, for example, we have x, f of x equals 4 times x to the power 3, plus 2 times the power x to the power 2 minus x minus 10, which is a function, a polynomial of degree 3. So it's cubic. In this clip, I will elaborate a little bit more on polynomials of degree 1. So suppose y is the image of a polynomial of degree 1, uh, is the, the image of a number x. And a polynomial of degree 1 is characterized by mx plus b, where m and x are, uh, m and b are constants, and such that m is unequal to 0. So this is the linear function, is the linear function of x. Well, consider the graph of such a function. Well, of course, these polynomials of degree 1 have lines as the graph, as a graph. And there's a clear interpretation of m larger than 0. In this image, the m is larger than 0, since it is the slope of the line. And the slope of the line here is positive. So suppose that the line makes an angle alpha with the x-axis. Then basically if we step forward and the size of the step is h, then we move up with mh. And the relationship between uh, alpha and m is given by the tangent of alpha equals m. Why is that? Well, you might question that. Well, the other picture is where m is smaller than 0, then the slope is negative. Yeah, at 0 we get, of course, the value b over here on the y-axis. And if we now step, take a step h to the left, then we go up by minus mh, right? Because h now is negative. And uh, suppose we have x1 and y1 given on a line, can we now find an equation of the line, the line in yellow? Well, it's clear that the, the green line, the vertical line, this one has equation x equals to x1. Yeah, it, it contains all the points in R2, 
which have the same x coordinate which is given by x1. Yeah, so the green line is just a line x equals x1. But actually we want to find the equation for the yellow line, so the non-vertical line. Well, there's a clear and easy way to get there, and it's using, using a formula which says that if I take another point x, y on the line, then the difference between y and i1 equals m times the difference in the change of x. Well, how do we see that? Well, suppose now I take in blue, I indicate some point x, y on the line then I see that the difference in x is x minus x1, right? So the length of this piece is x minus x1. If you look at the former graph, then I see that the difference in y is m times x minus x1. So y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. And this is the way we achieve this relationship between any arbitrary, for a given point x1, y1, I can find all others x, y on the line by applying this equation.